Hi. In this video, we will have a look at some MHD examples, and we will compare the performance with GNN and JPDA. Just like in GNN and JPDA, we need to use an estimator in MHD. For both GNN and JPDA, we use the marginal densities to compute the expected value for each object. In MHD, it's possible to do the same. We can use the marginal densities to compute, for example, the expected value or the maximum a posteriori estimate, often called MAP estimate. The MAP estimate is the one that maximizes the marginal density. However, doing this can actually be rather complicated in a practical tracking scenario. It is not unusual to have as much as thousands or tens of thousands of hypotheses in the MHT density. Computing the expected value then means to compute the weighted sum of the expected values for each hypothesis. And this can be computationally demanding if we have a very high number of hypotheses. Finding the map estimate can also be complicated because the marginal density is a mixture density. And this density might be multimodal and it might have uh, several local maximas. The estimator that is typically used in practice in MHT is one where the expected value is taken from each object for the hypothesis that has largest weight. So that means that we extract estimates from the hypothesis that has highest probability. And in practice, this works quite well. Let's begin with the same example as we had in GNN and JPDA. We have two objects with scalar states. We have the same linear Gaussian measurement model with uniform clutter as we had before. The motion model is a random walk. We have the same initial prior with means at negative 2.5 and 2.5. And for the visualizations of the results, we'll have a look at the marginal densities and the estimates. So to begin with, we have the initial prior. We then predict to time step one, and at time one, there are six measurements. Two close to where object one is likely to be located, and four close to where object two is likely to be. So from this, we can expect that for object one, we will have two significant hypotheses corresponding to the associations to the two measurements here on the left. And for object two, we can expect four significant hypotheses corresponding to associations to the four measurements here on the right. On this slide, we have visualized the different components in the marginal posterior densities. Each Gaussian component is scaled according to the posterior probability of that association. So as expected, we have two significant hypotheses for object one, and for object two, we have four significant hypotheses. Now we have instead visualized the marginal densities. So for object one, it has two peaks, and for object two, we have a single peak. Next, we predict to time two, and at time two, there are five measurements. So for each predicted hypothesis and each association, we now get a posterior hypothesis. So for this example, when we have a look at the individual hypotheses, we see that for object one, there is one hypothesis that has higher weight than the others. And for object two, there are several hypotheses that are approximately equally likely. If we look at the marginals instead, both object densities have one significant peak. And this is an illustration of how MHT works. So we have prediction followed by an update in which we get posterior hypotheses for each data association. A part of MHT is also the pruning and the capping. So we will have a look at that more in a later example. Here we show the measurements on the top left and the marginal densities on the top right. For some of the time steps, we can see that the marginal densities are actually multimodal. For example, for object one at time one and for object two at time 10. In the bottom row, we have the estimates and the densities on the left. And on the right, we have a comparison of the estimates and the ground truth. And for this particular example, we can see that MHT gives quite good results. The estimates are fairly close to the ground truth. If we compare to GNN and JPDA, we can see that for this particular example, if we compare GNN on the left and MHT on the right, we see that they give more or less the same estimates. 
This has to do with the fact that in MHT, we are extracting the estimate from the most probable hypothesis. And for this example, this hypothesis is the same as we would get if we were greedy and just took the best association in each time step, which is what GNN does. If we consider the example with lower probability of detection instead, 0.5, we can see some significant differences. Looking at the marginal densities on the top right, we see that for both objects, they are multimodal for many time steps. This is especially true for the first object in blue. For example, at times eight and nine, we can see two distinct modes. If we compare the estimates and the ground truth in the bottom right, we see that for this example, there are a few time steps in which the errors are quite large. For object one, we have a time one and time steps seven, eight, and nine we can see a rather large difference between the ground truth and the estimates. If we compare to GNN and JPDA, we see that for this particular example, arguably JPDA is actually the one with the best estimates. Regarding GNN and MHT, it's difficult to determine from these figures which has the best results. However, this is actually an atypical result. If we were to simulate these models many times and compare the average results for GNN, JPDA, and MHT, we would most likely find that on average, MHT outperforms JPDA and GNN. We can illustrate the density approximation in MHT using the example that we've had before. We have two objects, two measurements at minus 1.6 and 1, and we have the same prior. To begin with, we will consider probability of detection equal to 0.5. For this prior and these two measurements, as we've seen before, the posterior has seven components corresponding to the seven different data associations. Let's begin with an MHT approximation where we have just one hypothesis. So on the left, we have the exact posterior marginal densities and the MHT approximations. In the middle, we have in blue the exact posterior weights for the data associations. And in orange, we have the MHT weights. Because we have just one MHT hypothesis, its weight is equal to one. On the right, we visualize two so-called divergences, the kullback leibler divergence and the Cauchy-Schwartz divergence. Exactly how they are defined is not very important to know right now, but what you need to know is that they can be used to measure the error when we approximate the exact posterior density with the MHT density. Finally, we want to just point out that when n max is equal to one, so we have at most one single hypothesis in MHT, then MHT is actually equal to GNN. If we instead have two MHT hypotheses, then the marginal posterior approximation is slightly better. This can be seen by comparing the exact density and the MHT density on the left. And we can also see that the two divergences are now lower. And we also see in the MHT weights that they are much closer to the exact weights. With three hypotheses, we get an even better approximation and the divergences are now much closer to zero. If we add a fourth hypothesis, we see that the MHT density approximation is more or less equal to the exact density. The weights are also more or less equal and the divergences are almost zero. The reason that we have such a good approximation now is that the three hypotheses that we have pruned, they all have weights almost equal to zero. So for this particular example, four hypotheses in the MHT density gives a very good approximation of the exact density. So to save some computational resources, we could probably take just the three best hypotheses since that also gives a very small error. And if we compute the divergences for five, six, and seven hypotheses, we see that there is very little difference from having the four best hypotheses. So a general conclusion that can be drawn from this illustration is that the more hypotheses we have in MHT, the better the density approximation is. Now, in real scenarios, we cannot compute all data associations, and therefore we cannot verify that the pruned hypotheses have weights more or less equal to zero. However, the general conclusion still holds. The more MHT hypotheses we have, the better the density approximation is. And generally speaking, the better the density approximation is, 
the better our chances are to extract object estimates that are close to the ground truth. On this slide, we have the density approximations for GNN, JPDA, and MHT for the same scenario, but with three different probabilities of detection. We have PD equal to 0.5 in the column on the left, PD equal to 0.85 in the middle, and PD equal to 0.95 on the left. And from these figures, we can see that as a general rule, MHT is a better approximation than JPDA, which is a better approximation than GNN. This is just a small one-dimensional example with two objects, but the general rule holds also when we have many more objects and object states with higher dimension. We can summarize the presentation of hypothesis-oriented MHT with some pros and cons. If the maximum number of hypotheses is chosen large enough, it is often the case that MHT is sufficient to represent the uncertainty of the scenario. There is also a lot of empirical evidence that MHT works well in tracking scenarios when the signal-to-noise ratio is low. So, for example, when we have a low probability of detection, or the clutter intensity is high, or the measurement noise variance is large. In scenarios where GNN and JPDA might fail, MHT often still works. Among the downsides of MHT, we have that it is computationally more expensive compared to both GNN and JPDA, and it is also a bit more complicated to implement. In MHT, it's actually not guaranteed that the most probable association sequence at time k is represented in the MHT density at time k. However, if the maximum number of hypotheses n max is large enough, it is typically the case that the most probable association sequence is represented in the MHT density.